Hi everyone and welcome to day 10. So today we're going to talk about our personality quiz. Yesterday we talked about the roller coaster. Oh, and by the way, if no one has clapped for you today, clap for your dang self. Like, man, you're getting things done. Good job. I'm so proud of you. Um, and how are things going? Truly? Like, are they going well? Um, are things happening in your life? Is there anything I can help you with? Let me know. Okay. All right. So let's continue from where we left off. So what did we talk about yesterday? We talked about this roller coaster and basically this idea that, um, when we're on this journey, we reach different obstacles and loops in our life and challenges, and we have to try and anticipate them. But, um, once we hit that finish line, most people don't actually celebrate themselves. So make sure you take the time to celebrate yourself and don't be stuck in the mud. Make the choice to get out of there, out of the hamster wheel, uh, move forward and push forward towards your goals, even though there's obstacles and challenges and change that await. Okay. So today we're going to talk about, um, basically I want you to know more about yourself. Um, I came across this thing that makes, um, makes me feel like it was less of a, oh my God, like I know how to deal with people now and know my strengths and weaknesses. And I know how to approach different situations based on, um, this thing called my enneagram. So, um, and notice and realizing basically that it's not just my personality, but it's, or it's not just like me causing problems. It's actually my personality. Like it's how I'm hardwired kind of thing. So I'll drop a quiz in the chat or in the comments below in the description. It's free. So, um, no stress. Um, but we're just going to go through the nine enneagrams and then maybe take the quiz and see where you're at. And that will help you to unpack why you are the way you are and how you're hardwired and, um, how you respond in different situations, things that trigger you, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Let's get started. So when, oh yeah, when you take the quiz, you can be a combination of a few of them as well. So, um, I'll tell you some of my results and then, uh, you'll kind of see what that looks like. Okay. So number one, Enneagram number one is the reformer. This person has a strong sense of what's right and wrong, moral and ethical perfectionist. Enneagram number two, the helper, warm and empathetic, generous, people, people. Number three, the achiever, success-oriented, ambitious, and image-conscious. Enneagram number four, the individualist, very self-aware, creative, and expressive, suffers from melancholy. Enneagram number five, the investigator, independent and reserved, intellectual, has firm boundaries. Enneagram number six, the loyalist, security-oriented, prepared for the worst, trustworthy and hardworking. Enneagram number seven, the enthusiast, optimistic, seeks novelty, high energy. Enneagram number eight, the challenger, seeks to dominate, strong and assertive, resists weaknesses. Enneagram number nine, the peacemaker, easygoing, harmony seeking, desires to blend in. Does any of those sound like you? Um, when you under, when you start to understand these, um, you'll obviously, obviously deal with different situations in different ways. Um, but this helps you to discover your personality type. And like I said, the things that trigger you. So why are we doing this? Well, here's the power in this. You can know how you think some of your strengths, some of your weaknesses, uh, know how to deal with certain situations or how to go about them when they're being presented in your life. And you can also know that there's nothing wrong with you. It's your personality. It's how you're hardwired. It's your values. It's how you, how you are set as a person. Okay. Okay. The other cool thing is that you can know how to converse and build relationships based off the Enneagram, um, that maybe your spouses or your friends or colleagues, maybe even, um, are just like, you can have better conversations with them. So you can build those strong relationships based on knowing what type of Enneagram they have. Um, you can know this by like things that trigger them. You can help them in making sure they feel seen based on their Enneagram. Uh, so for example, if you do the quiz and at the end of it, let's say it gives you, well, it does give you a full description of your Enneagram and how that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, shows your strengths, uh, and challenges based off your Enneagram. Then you can like 
use that in order to adapt and change um, your life. Okay, so you can also have a mixture. So for example, um, can you guess what Enneagram I am? All right, so I am 98% a three, I am 89% a seven, and 87% a one, and 86% a nine. All the rest are 50% and lower. Um, I think I have 171% actually, but everything else is lower than 50%. So you can follow actually a lot of cool Instagram pages. Um, so this one that I came across, I kind of wrote some notes down uh, just to help us both uh, move forward and understand Enneagrams. So Enneagram number one, uh, based on the world through the lens of an Enneagram, is aware of what needs to be fixed, rules and standards, see what's wrong, Everything is black and white. Does that sound like you? Uh, Enneagram number two. Believes the best in others. Sees what needs to be done. Looks to connect. Searches to lighten the load for others. Enneagram number three. That's me. Uh, emphasis on priorities. Drive and ambition. Views life as social hierarchy. Sees tasks that need to be completed. Mm -hmm. Enneagram number four. Searches for deeper meaning in everything sees differences in the world, disdain for uniformity, full spectrum of emotions. Enneagram number five. Skepticism, sees the world by observation, notices the lack of knowledge, and evaluates scenarios. Enneagram number six. Evaluates possibilities, wonders how they can prepare, sees things as unsafe, and looks for stability. Enneagram number seven, which is my second one at 89%. Full of opportunity, glass half full, sees it as fun and exciting, looking for what's next. Everyone must have an Enneagram seven in their life. Um, Enneagram number eight, always something to conquer, sees efficiency or lack thereof, always looking for ways to support, sees power differences. Enneagram number nine, evaluates how to keep the peace, listens first, everyone's perspective matters, wants everyone to be happy, and sees potential conflict. So it's really cool when you understand how people think and how you think and um, how basically you deal with that. So for example, like the one thing I learned about myself is that it, like I'm an Enneagram number three. So every time I work, um, sometimes I work, like I'm on a hamster wheel and I'm not going anywhere. Like I'm working really, really hard and I'm not being successful. Um, but in order to achieve success, once I do, it's just so rewarding, but for like, like it depends what you value too. Um, and all that good stuff. But basically what I'm trying to say is when you put so much value on work or effort and success and priorities and trying to make stuff happen, um, it's so much more and you can figure out like your own personality and like vice versa, Enneagram number nine, that could be like devastating for them. That could be a huge trigger because an Enneagram number three, like myself, um, is driven and Enneagram number nine, who's kind of a peacekeeper is very different in how they, react to change or different situations. So tomorrow we're going to look at all this good stuff, but bigger. So I can't wait to tell you more tomorrow and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night or day. Bye.